in this lecture, we are going to talk about uh, risk minimization using Bayesian classifiers, and we'll also discuss the concept of Bayes risk. Uh, here's the outline of this lecture. Uh, we'll first review the basic concept of Bayes rule and Bayesian classifiers. And then we'll introduce the concept of risk and uh, we'll drive the decision rule that can minimize this risk. Uh, and then we'll go on to introducing the concept of loss metrics and also we'll define the base risk uh, for choosing an optimal action. Lastly, we'll uh, try to solve a problem. Uh, the problem is defined as asking uh, how can a doctor use this kind of concept uh, the base risk concept to make an optimal decision. Uh, you can find out more information on our lectures on our website uh, using this link on this slide. Alright, now let us review the concept of Bayes rule and Bayesian classifiers uh, for the discussion of risk and cost minimization. So our goal is that we want to make a decision. The, Making a decision is the goal of this Bayes rule and Bayesian classifier. So, for example, uh, we want to do a fish classification. So, let's say we have only two kinds of fish in the total population. One is bass, the other is a salmon. Then, how will we do it? So, the one way, the first way we can do is we will uh, make a decision based on uh, initial belief. So, it's called priors. So, we know that in the total population, uh, the twenty percent is the best, and the the rest of population is the salmon, which is the eighty percent. So the probability can be uh, point two for the best and then point eight for the salmon. So given this, uh, the optimal way, optimal decision will be choosing one with the largest prior. So the largest prior is given for the salmon. So the choosing, uh, if we can always classify the fish to salmon, it will be an optimal decision in this setting. So this will minimize the probability of errors, the classification errors. However, uh, this is not the best way we can do. We can do better than this. So how can we can take some observations. So what I mean by taking observation is uh, we can see uh, how Two kinds of fish is different in height, how two kinds of fish is different in color, and how two kinds of fish are different in on the weight and on so on. So all this uh, kind of information can be called as features. So so we can try to observe each feature for uh, the fish in each kind and then so and then we will try to pick good ones, good features. So one feature or the multiple features, combination of features. So what I mean by this is that uh, there will be, among all this information, there will be maybe one specific or two kinds of uh, information that will give us more information about uh, how to classify this fish. So let's say, uh, so we will analyze the the good the features so meaning that uh, for the height in which range uh, the the fish is more likely to be best than the salmon and in let's say the other feature we have is the weight and in which range of weight uh, the the fish is more likely to be uh, salmon than the best so so this is what I mean by analyze them so now we can use the result from the analysis of their features when classifying a new fish. So how uh, so how can we utilize this information is uh, by using the base rule and classifier. So now we can uh, form a total uh, decision process using this decision of base rule and base classifier. So given the new fish will perform some tests, so taking some observation on these selected features. So we will see the height of this new fish and then see the weight of this fish. fish. And then, uh, so, so we will 
give this to observation to the base classifiers, and these base classifiers will uh, choose best or the salmon, given this information, such that the probability of decision uh, error classification error is minimized. So the base rule uh, is allowing us to utilize the information obtained from collected observation on the selected features uh, to make an optimal decision, as we saw before. Uh, so let's look at this in detail uh, by using this a simple diagram. So this is a Venn diagram uh, showing uh, how each class uh, is taking place in the total population. So there are only two classes, the class 1 and class 2. Uh, so in this uh, way, we, uh, the union of the class 1 and class 2 is the total population S. And uh, the com there is no intersection between this class 1 and class 2. And so that uh, the likely of class 1 and class 2, the sum of it will be 1. Uh, so let's say we have the x uh, like this. So from this diagram, we can say that uh, the x is par uh, partially observed by class 1 and class 2. Since x is partially observed by class 1 and class 2, so x can be uh, obtained by combining the partial observation. So the first observation is by class 1 and the second observation is by class 2. If you combine these two, you will get an x and you can do the same thing for the probabilities. Alright, so let's uh, write down the base rule. It's like this. Uh, so the purpose is we will we want to find the posterior probability, meaning uh, we want to find the likelihood of the x, likelihood of x being classified as class 1. Uh, so the this posterior uh, can be computed by the for this term divided by this term. So the, let's find out what each term means. So this term means uh, the likelihood of, likelihood of x observed in class 1. And this is the uh, likelihood of class 1 and uh, as we said uh, this is the obtained by collecting the partial observations from each class so when we do the classification now the decision rule can be uh, choosing the class that is most probable given the x so it can be done by uh, comparing the posteriors so Given this, uh, the posterior equation, so we will compute each posterior and then we'll choose the class that has largest posterior. So if the this uh, posterior is bigger, me meaning that the x uh, classified as the likelihood, likelihood of x classified as class 1 is larger than the likelihood of x classified as class 2 then is the will uh, classify this x into class 1 so we will rewrite we can rewrite this equation into this uh, uh, this equation and this uh, we can uh, define as the discriminant function that is if it's greater than 0 is the class 1 and less than 0 is class 2 so when the the when the x gives the discriminant function 0, then the x becomes a decision boundary. Uh, and uh, equivalently, the discriminant function, from the discriminant function, we can find uh, another equation that we uh, cancel out the common term here because this, this is greater than 0. It doesn't affect the inequality equation. And uh, we can uh, rewrite the, this one into this form, and this will give us this inequality that we can we call likelihood ratio test. So now we compare uh, the likelihood of x observed in class one and class two, and this uh, we compare this like this ratio to the the ratio of the priors. Then we make the decisions. So 
this is uh, how we can make the decision uh, given the observations and the priors. Now, our question is, what if it is riskier when uh, class 1 is classified as class 2, then class 2 is classified as class 1. So for example, uh, if we know that it's riskier uh, to classify a cancer patient to non-cancer patients, then how can we make a decision process that can consider this risk factor? So this is what we are going to discuss in the risk and cost minimization in the next section.